I'm, I'm probably as... Uh, I'm probably as full of anticipation and expectation of what I sense in my soul that God wants to do uh, in our time together this morning. And just, just, I know Val mentioned it at the beginning, but just I want to reiterate, don't forget tonight at 6 o'clock, Schilling Center. I'm going to get this out of the way now because I feel like we are gonna, we're going to end worshiping today. And there's not going to be time <clears throat> for any other stuff. So tonight, 6 p.m., everyone's invited. Please come. Please come back, hang out. Man, it's going to be an awesome time at the Schilling Center, which if you go down to 9th Street, right over, take a right out of, the, out, of the, out of this area on Main Street, Schilling Center, take a left on 9th Street right there at McDonald's, <clears throat> and uh, you'll run into it, right? Okay? So uh, 6 p.m. there, bring a side dish or dessert uh, and to share, and we're going to just throw in. It's going to be an awesome time. Um, <clears throat> so uh, that's tonight. Next week, next Sunday morning is our official Christmas celebration uh, in, our, in our Sunday morning service. The kids are going to be involved. Kids are going to be singing a couple songs, and uh, we're going to have an illustrated message to celebrate and remember the season. It's going to be powerful. So invite your neighbors, invite your friends, family, uh, invite aunts and uncles and grandma and grandpa to come see uh, Junior uh, sing a little Christmas song next week. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be awesome, so don't miss that. But we're going to, we're, today is 316 Sunday. We've been talking about this the last couple weeks. We're going to receive at the end of our time. This is the only time that I've ever, I'm ever going to preach on sowing and giving that we're going to actually take them an offering right after that. But I've been, I've been teaching this over the last couple of weeks. Uh, and, it's, and it's for a specific reason. <laughs> Listen, today, and the reason I'm so pumped and the reason I'm so excited and the reason I have such an expectation in my heart today is that today there are literally some of you sitting here right now this morning. There's some of you that are watching online. Uh, that you today are maybe for the first time going to really step out in faith and you've heard God. God has been speaking to you over the last couple of weeks and we've been talking about the 316 offering and uh, you, have, you, have, you, are, you have come today ready to sow, ready to give and you are gonna, some of you, for the, for maybe for the first time in a very challenging way are gonna step out of your comfort zone in the area of sowing and, uh, and I, I know that when we do that, when we step out in faith, God always shows up in miracles. Amen, somebody? I said, when I step out of faith, God always shows up in his faithfulness. Amen? And so, and so man, I am excited and I am pumped about what's going to happen today. Uh, some of you guys today are going to finally stop eating your seed, and you're going to get it in the ground and start sowing it, and power, power from heaven is going to be released into your life. And it's going to be a, it's, it's, it's an amazing moment. So I'm going to pray, and I want to dig in on that thought today. I want us to sow as we sow today. Uh, again, if you, your regular offering goes in back here, we're going to receive our offering right up front here this morning for the 316, but give as you normally do, either in the receptacles in the back or online. Um, and just real quick, if you are planning on giving online for the 316 offering, either through PayPal or through texting, please go to redlifechurch.com. There are a couple of instructions for the 316 offering because I want to make sure that we get it all appropriated properly. Amen. So uh, half of everything that we give at the end of this offering, we're giving right back out from this church into, and we're going to sow that into Franklin County Special Olympics. We do this every year. Uh, we find we, we we pray and ask God to show us a, a, a local nonprofit that we can sow into. And so half of every dollar that we spent that you give today is going right back into that. And I know that's kind of a, it's just, well, how did you come to that? Man, we just, we believe Jesus, if, if we're Jesus in the earth, who would Jesus be hanging out with? Who would he be ministering to? He'd be looking for people who often are neglected and forgotten and, over, and, and not thought of very often. Amen, somebody? And so uh, that is a segment of our, and, and they do so many opportunities for people with special needs, adults and kids alike. And so we're just gonna sow into that as a church. So I want, so the reason I'm saying go to redlifechurch.com is because uh, especially if you're texting, there's a special thing I need you to do there, um, just a quick email sent so that we can make sure we know uh, what what is for the regular offering was the 316. Everybody understand that? Okay, I've talked enough and I want to teach and preach because I got a word to give you this morning. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you so much for this time. Lord, I thank you, Father, right now. I just ask, Holy Spirit, that you will stir up in our hearts, God, the, the anticipation and the expectation that I feel in my spirit that I know is from you, that you've been stirring up in me, God, for the last three or four weeks, God, as we've been thinking and praying and getting ready for this moment. Lord, I pray that, that same expectation of God would begin to come alive, that you would awaken that in the heart of every person, Father, that is about to step out in faith, God, and, and, and maybe, some, maybe some give in a single offering more than they've ever given, Father, and it's a stretch, and you're stretching their faith, and you're using this, and you're gonna use this as a moment, God, where you teach them about your faithfulness and your goodness and your miraculous power to provide, Father. I thank you for that, and I pray for anticipation and expectation and a hunger for your word, God, in our souls this morning as we dig in. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. Genesis chapter eight, verse 22. 
As we get ready to sow today, I want to talk just for a few minutes, just for a few minutes and give us a few ideas about what, about the power of sowing and specifically the power of the seed. Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. This is um, after God, this is a promise that God gives Noah after the flood. So the flood has come. God has wiped out the entire earth, spares Noah and his family and the ark. Of the, and, and you know the story of the Noahs and the ark and all the animals. And, and, and so the, wa- the water subside. Noah steps back out of the, of the, uh, out of the ark and begins to, the earth begins to replenish. And of course, there's a story of the rainbow. And this is a promise that God gave Noah after the flood. And this is a principle that God set into motion and set into existence that is in existence it's right now, thousands of years later, and it's this. Genesis 8, 22. As long as the earth remains. Does the earth still remain? Is everybody sure? Some people are like, oh, I'm not sure. That's no sure question. Don't overthink it. Does the earth still remain? Yes. So is, that means that everything that is about to be said after that is still remains, right? Okay. So let's, let's go. As long as the earth still remains, there will be... <clears throat> planting and harvest, or other translations will say sowing and reaping, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night. These are principles that God has set into motion. And the very first thing he says, he says, Noah, from this point on, th- as long as the earth remains, there will be sowing and, and reaping or planting and harvest okay this is a principle that is existing in the earth right now today and here's what you need to understand when it comes to sowing and reaping or planting and harvest listen to me close if you don't hear anything else today there's a couple things you really need to hear but this is going to be one of them okay are you ready listen every harvest starts with a seed amen say it again Every single harvest that you will ever see in your life, whether it is financial, whether it is literally planting uh, uh, gardens and fruit and crops, every harvest starts with a seed. Turn your neighbor and say, every harvest starts with a seed. And because this is a principle that God has set, this is a universal kingdom law of God that he has set into motion throughout the entire universe as long as the earth remains. Listen, you got to understand that this principle of sowing and reaping is applied and it works itself out through every facet of our lives, even to the point of salvation. Listen, every harvest starts with a seed. Salvation started with a seed. Okay, you follow me? Watch this. John 3.16, for God so loved the world, that's where we call the 3.16 offering, for God so loved the world that he what? That he what? That he what? Gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have everlasting or eternal life. Salvations, that means this. When, when God was in heaven looking for the plan of salvation, he looked for a seed. He looked for something he could sow to bring about the intended harvest that he had in mind. Does that make sense? Salvation started with the seed. This principle of sowing and reaping, is, it shows up all throughout Scripture. 1 Corinthians 15, the Apostle Paul writes about sowing and reaping. And he says that our bodies, our physical bodies, when we die, are literally being planted in the ground like seed, and we are awaiting the harvest of resurrection. So our physical bodies actually become seed. Uh, in the parable of the sower, Jesus called the very word of God. He said the sower sowed is the word of God. So the, this word that we're looking at today, this word that you, sh- that you hopefully are reading on a regular basis and getting into your life, it is a seed that is going into your life, into your heart to reap the harvest of righteousness that God intends it. Are you following me so far? So the word of God is a seed. Salvation, Jesus himself was a seed. Our bodies are seed. Galatians chapter 6 Verse 7 and 8 says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. And in due season, you will reap a harvest of righteousness. So Paul there in Galatians, again, talking about sowing and reaping, says that not only are our bodies seed that go into the ground, but he says actually every action, every decision, every choice that I make is a seed. And from that seed, there is a, a, a harvest that comes from that action. Does that make sense? So this this principle of sowing and reaping reaches far beyond 
simply giving and offering and, and planting crops. And it, it, it is everything in our life. It, it, it happens. Because, let me say it this way. Everything God does in the earth, everything that happens in the earth happens because of this principle of sowing and reaping. Every harvest starts with the seed. That goes for good and bad. Amen? Other places in Scripture talk about our words being seed. Your word, the things that you speak, the words that I allow to come in my mouth, they are seed. And they're going into my life. They're going into the atmosphere. And they're sowing in the ground. And they will produce a harvest. That, that you can say, that's either amen or oh me. I don't know. But it's, a, it's a, so sowing and reaping. This is a universal law that exists. Paul, we're going to look at this today, in 2 Corinthians 9, 6, and 7, <clears throat> uses this principle of sowing and reaping when it comes, and he, and he sees this in action when it comes to the area of our finances. We looked at this last week. We're going to look at this again, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 and 7. Paul is encouraging the Corinthian church to take part in this special offering that they're taking place for Jerusalem, who has been hit by famine and who needs help and assistance. And the churches say, we will help that church all, from all over the world. And this is what Paul reminds them. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 and 7. He says, remember this. A farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. And you must decide in your own heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure, for God loves a person who gives cheer cheerfully. So Paul is taking this principle of sowing and reaping that is applied to every area of our life, and he says this is also applied when, when we give, when we are faithful in giving, when we obey what God tells us to do in giving, we are actually sowing, and we are sowing just like the farmer sows his seed and expects a crop. We are sowing what we are giving, and we are expecting a harvest. Amen, so somebody. Amen. The seed is amazing because each side, each and every seed, listen to me, inside each and every seed contains the potential for life. Amen. So we cannot neglect this idea of sowing. So we are going to sow in just a few moments. We're going to sow before we do. I want to give you just a few principles and a few things to understand about what is going to be happening spiritually as we sow. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. The first thing I need to understand about sowing is this. Listen to me close. Okay? Sowing, listen, I sow for the future in spite of the present. Okay? If I'm going to experience the power of sowing and reaping, of seed time and harvest, of planting and harvest in my life, then I've got to understand and I've got to start to get comfortable even though we'll always probably feel uncomfortable, I've got to just get used, I've got to get comfortable with being uncomfortable of the momentary loss that I'm going to feel when I lose what's in my hand at the present, understanding that I'm sowing not for right now, but I'm sowing for later. You follow me? I sow, let me say it this way, seed fills your future with potential. Because inside every seed is the power and the ability and the potential to produce life, okay? If I want apples 10 years from now, I've got to sow an apple seed today. Does that make sense? I've got to lose what's in my hand right now so that I can set myself up for something in the future. That's how it works, okay? So I have to understand that when I'm sowing today, I'm not sowing for right now. In fact, my present circumstances may tell me that I have no business sowing. My present circumstances may dictate to me that, I, that, I, that it is impossible for me to do what the Holy Spirit has put in my heart to do. That may be my present circumstance, but I've got to understand that I'm going to sow now in spite of my present circumstance so that I can be ready for a harvest tomorrow. Amen, somebody? And if I want my future to be filled with potential, I've got to put seed in the ground today. Here's what, the, here's what I'm doing when I sow. And this is especially, when, and in fact, if you, I don't have time to take you back all the way through this, but if you read back through 2 Corinthians <clears throat> chapter 8 and 9, you'll see that, in fact, the Corinthian church is a very well-off and blessed church. They, they had all sorts of business and trade. They were a very wealthy city in the Roman world. And, but right before he's reminding them to give, he tells them the story of the Macedonian church. And he says this. He says, I want to remind you. Of, you can read this in 2 Corinthians 9, verse, verses 1 through 5. He, said, he says, I want to remind you, as you are faithful to do what God told you to do, he said, let me tell you about the Macedonian church. And the Macedonian church was not the Corinthian. 
Corinthian church. They, in fact, were a very impoverished and poverty-stricken church. In fact, Paul alludes to this idea that they didn't even ask the Macedonian church to be a part of the collection for Jerusalem because they knew that they were struggling so hard themselves. But when the Macedonian church heard what they were doing for Jerusalem, they said, how dare you exclude us from the opportunity to sow into what God wants to do in this house. And so the Bible, Paul says that out of their extreme poverty, the Macedonian church gave generously to the cause that they were doing in Jerusalem. And here's what happens. When I sow, especially when my circumstances don't make any sense to give. Can I, can I, just, can I just help you out real quick? You are going to have many circumstances in your life Many opportunities where you're going to look and go, you know what, it doesn't add up. I shouldn't, I shouldn't do what God's told put in my heart to do. Okay? It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Be faithful anyway. Here's why. When I sow in spite of my present circumstances, you know what I'm saying? What I'm putting out there for God to see and in my own life, I'm saying, to the, I'm saying this. It will not always happen be like this. When I put seed in the ground, even in the midst of my own struggle, I'm declaring for my future, you know what? I'm not always going to struggle today like I am right now. There is a bright future and a hope in Christ. I have hope in tomorrow that it is not always going to be like this, but I recognize that sowing and reaping is a principle that exists all throughout eternity as long as earth remains. So I've got to put seed in the ground now to fill my future with potential life later. Amen? Sowing says it's not always going to be like this. Okay? One of the greatest quotes I ever heard on this principle was a guy by the name of Mike Murdoch, and he said it this way. This is so powerful. This, this, this principle probably changed my view on, on this more than anything else. Listen to me close. Seed only leaves your hand, but it doesn't leave your life. Think about that for a second. When I sow... When I give, there is a natural fear that exists because I think, man, I can do something with the little I have in my hand, and if I let it go now, I may not be able to make it to tomorrow. But I've got to understand that if it's seed that I'm sowing, then it's not leaving my life, it's only leaving my hand. But I will see that seed again sometime in the future, and when I see it again, it will be called harvest. Amen, somebody? I don't know who needs to hear that or who needs to be reminded of that today. You might be sitting here going, man, I've sown so much and given so much and lost so much. Let me just help you real quick, friend. You haven't lost anything. The seed that you have put in the ground, whether it's giving financially or prayers that you've, pay, that you've uh, prayed or other things that you've sown in your life. Listen to me, friend. I got news for you. It hasn't left your life. It's just waiting for the appropriate harvest when God says, now. Amen? Seed fills the future with potential. The second thing I need to understand about sowing, I swear if, you're, if you've come today expecting and ready to sow, that's where you start to get real excited. Listen to me. God never asked you to sow without an intended harvest in mind. That means this. When God says so, S O W, not S O, not S E W. I had to get some clarification on that. Daryl helped me with that earlier this week. When God says so, He already has a harvest in mind. Anybody do gardens? I, don't, I, I always thought about doing a garden, but then it's like, nah, I just won't do it. It's like, like literally every spring, I'm like, you know, we got, well, we've got a place in our yard that's like, this is a perfect spot. And probably every spring, me and my wife have a conversation. Like, Let's clean that area up and sow a garden. And then we're like, 
And then I fast forward to like July and August when I'm out there every day in the hot sun having to take tomatoes and whatever else I put out. I'm like, this, no, it's not worth it. Because, I, I mean, I see you people like, I mean, it's, and it's amazing. I, I love when somebody's like, here's a bunch of tomatoes. And I'm like, okay, cool. But I, also what happens is like, I see you, you like, the struggle, like the struggle of trying to get rid of all the stuff that you have is, it seems to be a real problem. So I'm like, I, you know, I don't want to contribute anymore to that. <laughs> so, so if you plant a garden, when, if you plant tomato seeds, are you doing that expecting pickles in a few months no right you're expecting tomatoes your your intended harvest is already in mind amen somebody if you plant if you plant corn you plant sweet corn in your garden are you are you expecting romaine lettuce to pop up out of there no you're planting that seed with the specific goal of harvesting sweet corn later on correct am i right that's how i mean i'm not an expert but i think that's how it works right Right, uh, uh, <laughs> you don't just you, and you, nobody just go, you don't just go to the store and be like, just give me some random seeds and I'll just throw them in the ground and whatever pops up, that'd be awesome. Oh, that might be fun. That might be just like like a mystery bag of seeds, right? Just throw them out there and whatever comes. Like <laughs> that would be kind of kind of amazing. I didn't know we could even grow bananas in Indiana. Awesome. And whatever. Uh, <clears throat> no, no, no. When you sow, when you plant seed in the ground, you're doing so because you already have an idea of the harvest you're expecting. Amen? Guess what? When God leads you and I to sow, he's doing the same thing. He has put this principle of sowing and reaping into the earth. As long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest, sowing and reaping, planting and harvest, these things will remain. So when God is telling you and I to sow in our lives today, it's because he knows the intended harvest that he has for that seed. Amen? So when I sow, I need to say, God, what is this seed for so that I can begin to pray and begin to believe for the harvest that you have in mind for it? But it also lets me know when I begin to feel God say, hey, give this extra, do this, sow here, do that. God is doing that not because he's trying to take from your life, but he's doing that so he can set you up to receive something in your life. Amen? Amen? God never asked me to sow without an intended harvest. So I need to target that seed and say, God, what is this seed for? And that brings me to the third thing I've got to do for the seed is this. Don't neglect watering your seed. Amen? Okay? you got to have water. When you put something in the ground, that's not the end of the story. You don't just throw it in the ground and hope everything works out for six or eight. I mean, six or eight. You, you want to make sure that things... So how do I water my seed? I water it through faith. I water it through prayer. I water it through the Word of God. I water it through the words that I speak. When I plant in the ground, I begin to pray and I begin to target. And I begin to say, God, this is the seed that you've asked me to pray. And I believe that it's going to receive a harvest. You say, well, I don't know what to pray over it. I've, to go back over the last three weeks that, I've taught, that we've been teaching. I've given you all kinds of scriptures that you can taken to listen listen let me just help you real quick if you're at, if you're, everybody's out there struggling like well i try to pray i don't know you know what you should pray your prayer should be the word of god you know why because the word of god is god's will so when i'm praying the word of god i'm praying his perfect will over my life over my situation and then i don't have to worry about am i praying in god's will or not imagine that so get some of those scriptures that we've talked about. Read 2 Corinthians 9. Read those things that we've talked about. God, 2 Corinthians 9, 11, that God wants to enrich you in every way so that you can be generous in every way so that through your giving, praise will be known unto God. God will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. Begin to, begin to water your seed with that word. Amen? Water your seed with worship. Water your seed with faithfulness. It's no good just to sow it and forget about it and be continually water it. Amen? Amen, somebody? And the fourth and final thing I want to talk about before we dig in here is this. And this is, this is, this is a big game changer. I've got to begin to, this is a shift in my way of thinking as it relates to sowing and reaping and seed and harvest. Listen to me close. I've got to understand that seed is God's provision. 
seed is the way that God will often provide. Okay? So I've got to stop misjudging my seed. Sin separated man from God. God looked for a seed, Jesus, so he gave. You see what I'm saying? And often we can never get past, this thing that sometimes gets us, never allows me to get past this step and this hurdle because I'm looking at my present lack and I'm going, I don't have enough to make it now. How can I possibly give from what I have now? Here's what I've got to understand. The seed in my hand is the way God provides. And here's what I need to get to. If I look around at my life and if all you see is need, then I should start looking for a seed. Follow me? If all I see around me is need, lack, not enough, then I need to begin to look at what I have that's already not enough and begin to say, okay, God, what is in my hand right now that's a seed? Because often what happens, and if I can get the music deal and to start coming up, often what happens is this. I have a lack, I have a need in my life. Let's just pretend that I have this great, overwhelming need for apples. Go back to the apples. What I'll begin to do is look for apples. Or I may begin to look for an orchard. Or I may begin to look for an apple tree. And I'm praying, God, I need apples. God, I need apples. Where are the apples, Lord? You wake up every morning, you go to the mailbox looking for an apple tree. Go to the grocery store, looking for an apple tree. Go to work as you're driving around, you're looking for an apple. Anyone ever had a need in your life that you're looking for it around the corner? It's so desperate. Come on, somebody. God, where are the apples? I don't see them. I don't see the trees. I don't see the orchard. I don't see the apples. There's, there's nothing here for me to eat. And I'm waiting for God to provide me an apple tree, but what he's given me is a seed. Amen, somebody? And if I don't understand that seed is God's provision, then I will begin to look at the word of God and say, well, God's word isn't true because I've been having this need in my life for all these years. I've been lacking this area of my life all these years. The problem wasn't that God wasn't providing. He just didn't provide what you were looking for. I was busy looking for a tree and what God gave me was a seed. See, God's provision is seed. And what he will often do when I say, God, I need a financial miracle. God, I need a financial breakthrough. God, I need, I need you to provide this for my life what he will do listen what he will do is give you a job and that job will provide you with an income and that income will be seed and God will say will you be faithful with this seed will you put the seed in the ground will you water it will you sow into it will you pray over it will you be faithful to it and if you'll do that then all of a sudden God will provide the harvest I'm looking for. <laughs> Don't, how dare I accuse God of not being faithful to his word when I just refuse to see the provision that he's already given me. Listen, seed is his provision. Seed is his provision. This is, the, this is where the faith step comes. Listen to me now. If what you are, if the, oh God, listen to me, listen to me, don't miss this, get this. If the harvest that I have in my hand isn't enough to meet my needs, then that probably means that I'm not holding on to the harvest yet, I'm just holding on to the seed. I can hear, I smell the smoke of gears grinding in this place this morning. I know, I know, because this is a paradigm shift in how you view what's in your hand. Because now it means what... 
if what's in my hand isn't enough, it's likely seed. And now you're telling me that I'm supposed to lose what's in Yes, why? Because I lose what's in my hand, but it doesn't leave my life. Come on, somebody. Some of you right now have the greatest miracle that God is ever going to birth in your life. You have it right now in your hand. It doesn't look like the miracle yet. It doesn't look like deliverance yet. It doesn't look like healing yet. It doesn't look like debt, debt freedom from debt yet. It doesn't look like financial provision yet. It doesn't look like the thing, but it is a seed. And you don't even know it, but you've been holding on to it. God has already put it in your hand. You know, just, just literally last night or yesterday, we had we we talked, we did the budget, we figured out, okay, this is what we feel like we're able and what we want and what we feel like God is leading us to give in this offering. And before we've even given, watch, before we've even given it, this is how God works, man. If I wanted to give another amount, but it, it, I mean, it, it really, and I was like, okay, God, is this you, is this me? There, there is a point where it's like, okay, maybe that's just my heart and not God's heart because this is what's there, but I'm going to give. It's still a stretch. You understand what I'm saying? We got a bill. We got a bill yesterday that we were waiting on, and the bill was like 25% of what I had budgeted for. And I went to bed going, okay, awesome. Thank you, Lord. Then I woke up this morning. And instantly I felt the Lord say, there's your seed. There's your seed. You understand what I'm saying? I've got to begin to look at everything that comes into my hands and say, God, is this, is this, is this seed or is this harvest? Listen, and when I'm looking for God's provision, it's often going to be a seed. Will you stand all over this place this morning? I don't, 